In today's episode, I speak to Shana Francesca about intentional leadership and life design. We look at the importance of curiosity, respect and accountability, and we discuss the need to set boundaries when it comes to personal questions and sharing information. Shana discusses the concept of life design, which involves making intentional choices and attracting like-minded individuals to create a powerful and fulfilling life. She also asks the question, are you entitled to my energy? This is an interesting conversation on how to foster learning, understanding, empathy and connection. I create clear thinking and decisive leaders who can amplify their influence. Contact me to find out how I can help you or your organisation. And today our guest is Shana Francisca. How are you doing? I'm good, Judith. How are you? I'm really good, thank you. Shana, what's types of books do you like to read? Oh my gosh, we could talk about this the entire time. (laughs) (laughs) um, I'm currently rereading Mia Birdsong's How We Show Up. It's Mm. all about redefining what community is in a way that's actually supportive, that questions the nature of um, our understanding of what relationship, friendship, romantic relationships, what all of those are. It asks us to to really examine what we really want, how we really want to be connected to each other, and then to find ways to make that happen um, outside of, you know, the heteronormative construct that requires us to get all of the things from a romantic partner. Um, And that's that one I'm rereading. This is my second time because I really, books like this, you know, I feel like they're, when they're challenging me, I've got to read them multiple times because you you just it doesn't sink in the way that you want it to the first time. Yeah, that makes Second, sense. Yeah. Secondly, I just started reading Leading with Joy by Akaya Wenwood and Rajasvini Bansali. Um, it's about, uh, you know, practices for uncertain times, right? Specifically leadership for uncertain moments, which, hello, if this isn't an <laughs> uncertain <laughs> moment, I don't know what is. Um and so I just cracked into that. I just started reading the um, the preface last night and I was like, oh, this is going to be a good one. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I um, I also really believe in pulling in um, fiction. So the next fiction book on my list is The Scent Keeper. And then also a friend of mine writes romance novels. Um, and she published her second book. Her first one was Violet Crown. The second one I think is Emerald Crown. So I'm getting ready to read that one as well. Um, and then I have a whole list of, of other, oh, I'm also in the middle of reading My Grandmother's Hands um, that I started reading a little bit ago. It's a, it's a little bit more in depth. So I take my time with that because I really want to sit with what it's talking about. Um, so yeah, I like to read all kinds of books. Um, but I spend a lot of time with books around psychology, around leadership, around personal development, around what it is to create community. Um, and next I kind of want to dive into, uh, books around what, uh, Brown system theory, which is basically how we create systems and connection with one another and how we kind of fall into very typical patterns and how we can recognize that and, um, take ownership of it. Brilliant. So it tells me then that you are definitely a continuous learner. For sure. Someone who's pathologically curious yeah. and he's a seeker. Yeah. Sounds great. Yeah. It sounds like we've got much in common. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's, that's, a, and that it's not, um, it's not a coincidence that curiosity is a foundational element of what I call an intentional leader, right? So yeah. I have an intentional leadership formula. And um, it follows the rules of mathematics. So I have be respectful plus be curious, um, or be curious plus be respectful in parentheses, and that multiplied times practicing accountability equals intentional leadership, um, intentional and ethical leadership. Um, and you know that that is for the reason that um, you know being curiosity without respect is intrusive and respect without curiosity is uninformed it's uneducated um and then anything we want to be good at we have to practice and that includes accountability yeah i like that i really do like that yeah because it's quite interesting isn't it where 
when um when people just answer a ton of questions but which is funny me saying that because i am a question asker but someone who asks a lot of questions about you that requires personal sharing but they don't share themselves and then they're surprised that you don't want to share because they're just then it becomes intrusive because it doesn't you're not sure of the intention because it's just be vulnerable be vulnerable be vulnerable be vulnerable but doesn't answer the question as to why I am not vulnerable with people who do not demonstrate consistently respect I do not, I do not feel, and I do not feel obligated to answer people's questions simply because they ask them, right? There are many times that somebody dives into a very personal question, especially when it's a man. I'm much more protective when it's a man who's asking me a personal question um, because in my experience, they're coming from a very different place than when a woman asks me a very personal question. Um, and so, you know, I'm, I'm much more, a little bit, a little bit more cautious in that, in that, in that moment. Um, but for me, I, I have no problem saying to someone, I'm, I'm actually not comfortable sharing that information about myself with you, or, you know, I'm happy to answer that question at another time once we know each other better, you know, and just, and when I set that boundary, it typically, the, how the person reacts to that boundary will typically tell me all I need to know. <laughs> mm. um, right. So when I, and, and, and so I'll usually do that in order to kind of test the brakes, right. And see, does somebody actually respect me or do they feel entitled to my energy, my answers, my time. Right. So if I, if I gently put up a boundary, and say, hey, I'm just, I'm not comfortable with answering that question right now. I'm happy to keep talking with you. And we can answer that question another time um, when we know each other a little better, but I'd love to get to know you first, right? Um, And that, and they have a very negative reaction to that. Then I walk away from the conversation and I just excuse myself. And I, um, because I don't any longer subscribe to the idea that I owe someone any more politeness than they're extending. So if someone violate is is interested in is not interested in my boundaries is not interested in actually showing me respect, um, you know, then that's somebody I'm not safe with, and so I, I'm not going to continue that conversation. I think that's a really good point. I think that's I think that's really interesting. What do you do for a living, Sean? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I'm a speaker. I'm a writer. I'm, I, I facilitate workshops around intentional leadership and living. And then send it, sitting underneath that intentional living, um, which I call life design, is uh, interior design work as well. So, um, you know, it's a culmination of recognizing that our physical environment is a part of us being intentional about how we are allowing ourselves to show up. And our home is the practice ground for um, our home is our practice ground for learning how to take up space, giving ourselves permission to take up space, being our authentic self. Um, there's there's so much that we can practice at home. Um, and, and because we spend two thirds of our life there right inside of our homes. Um, and it's the it's the first place that we see when we open our eyes in the morning and the last place we see when we close our eyes at night, typically, mostly. Um, and that place needs to honor and and uh, support us in ways that we haven't been taught to understand. OK, now that sounds that sounds really interesting. Let's listen to a quick advert. The Maverick Paradox. Judith Germain is an author, speaker, consultant, mentor and trainer, and the leading authority on Maverick leadership. She is the founder of the Maverick Paradox, which supports organizations to enhance their leadership capabilities and to help business owners develop and grow their businesses. Judith enables individuals, business owners and organizations to improve their impact and influence. She is also HR Zone's leadership columnist, And her expert opinion has appeared in national, international and trade press. Welcome back to the Maverick Paradox. This is the podcast for the pathologically curious. 
I really am dying to know about is what's this life design stuff? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So life design is the recognition that, you know, we have a set amount of choices in our life and depending on who we are and how well society accepts us, our choices are different than other people's maybe. Right. Maybe have more or less choices, but there is power in those choices. And when we get intentional about those choices, when we take that extra step, that extra moment, it's not even an extra step, it's an extra breath, an extra moment to say, what is it that I want to come from this? What is the result of this that I'm, that I'm seeking and make sure that the actions that we're taking are, are moving towards that direction right um we can we can recognize just how powerful our choices are and then we can find other people and we can attract other people into our life who are doing the same right and then we can be even more powerful together and is this applicable at work and at home yeah right and there's this there's this thing that i think is fascinating is that i hear people all the time say that they are trying to create a better work life balance but mm. the thing about that statement is that it implies we're not living while we're working and we are right mm. we are we are alive it doesn't no it for many people it doesn't feel that way and it should feel that like we're living while we're working but whether it feels that way or not we are right and so life design is about understanding intentionality and just like i was explaining you know our home our private life becomes the practice ground for who we show up as in every aspect of our life and um so that's where life design is applicable to every aspect of excuse me every aspect of who we are thank you so how do you go around designing your life then I, I always start with really simple and easy practices. Our brains are like, they're not stupid, but they're kind of easy to train if we take little steps. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and, and so when it comes to creating a new practice, I'm a big fan of it coming alongside with something that we're already doing and it just being a minor adjustment, not adding a new thing right? Because we already have so much on our plates. We're already doing more than we can possibly manage for most people. So I'm not proposing, life design is not about doing more. It's about being more intentional with what we're already doing. So I say to to start in, in ways like this, there are a myriad of scents on our body every single day from our shampoo and our conditioner to our body wash, to our deodorant, to the scent of of the laundry detergent that we use, um, you know, to wash our clothing, um, to the lotion that we put on our body, and and various other scents and perfumes, and so on and so forth. How often do we take a moment to think about how all of those scents work together? Right, because they're all living on our body every single day, but very rarely do we think about the fact that these scents are commingling on our body. <laughs> Right. So if we took a step back and said, you know what, this month feels particularly stressful for me. And what scent do I associate with relaxation or with joy or with some emotion that I want to keep going back to and remember for myself? And for me, it might be like something citrusy if I want to come back to joy. It might be lavender if I come back, if I want a sense of peace and calm. And so I'll make sure that my deodorant, my body wash, my you know, my shampoo, all of these scents are either accentuating lavender or are lavender scented, right? And so that I'm I'm getting this experience with the scent at different times throughout the day, through my hair, through my clothing, through my, you know, my lotion, so on and so forth. That's reminding my mind, okay, okay, relaxation. Okay, calm. Okay, we're safe, right? And uh, for most people, they don't like recognize consciously that scent is one of our strongest connections to memory and emotion. So once we create a scent memory, um, unless it's overridden by something dramatic, um, it's it holds on um, pretty significantly. And so we can then say, okay, so lavender has been well-established as this relaxation thing. I'm going to use that. And furthermore, I might take it 
a step further and because I work from home and say, when I'm done working, um, I light I might light my lavender candle to trigger to my brain to remember, okay, it's time to relax. We're done with working, right? And these are all simple things that take fractions of seconds. And they're already some they're just to think about, but we're they're already attached to something we're already doing. We're already buying deodorant, we're already buying shampoo and body wash. We're already doing all of those things. But now we're just being intentional about it how we're doing those things, right? And um, when I start talking about this, there's been a a few times when I talked about this and someone's like, oh my God, I didn't even recognize that this is what I was subconsciously already doing because in my office, I have one specific scent, you know, uh, uh, like a, you know, a diffuser or something like that. And it's nowhere else in the house, only in my office, right? Um, And so for some people, there might already be these practices that they've created, they just don't necessarily know why, right? But once we become conscious of it, we can become more intentional about how we're using those practices to benefit our lives. Brilliant. So thank you. So that's like anchoring from a smell, isn't it? So you can do the same yeah. thing uh, with visuals, can't you? Pictures yeah, and, and and touching and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. You can involve your other senses. And that's the thing is, you know, I just say start with one practice because once we start getting to that place of intention and we start practicing being intentional in that way, it starts to open up our curiosity about the other aspects of our life where we could be more intentional, right? We start to see, oh, you know what? I didn't think about, you know, and just take a step back before we're making decisions and be just that that little bit more intentional and it starts to build up on top of each other. Success to me looks like recognizing the power of our choices and being intentional about them. And the, and you know, what all of a sudden looks like overnight success to other people is actually the intention behind a thousand smaller decisions and that being the foundation for success. Thank you. So is that the same as being the author of your own story or do you mean that to be something different yeah I mean it goes hand in hand right when we recognize the power in being intentional we can at that moment recognize that we are the author of our story we start to recognize the impact of our actions on our perception and perception is reality Right. And we start to recognize the ways in which we want to better connect with people around us, or perhaps we want to shift and change the people we spend time with. We start to get intentional about so many things. And that intentionality is when we we are really sitting in the driver's seat, when we are sitting in the place of recognizing that we are responsible you know, for our story. And yes, there's lots of factors we have no control over. And I wish that we did. And I wish the world wasn't as cruel as it is. But we can take responsibility for the choices we do have and we can make them more powerfully. Mm. So thank you for that. I'm just trying to to think this one through. Um, So I've always thought about an intentional leader does, and obviously it's something you build into doing and it's not something you would get perfect all the time. But if you, if you decide, if you, if you decide to set an intention to do something, then you execute that intention and then you become known as someone that is determined to do what they commit to do. Mm -hmm. Um, I've never considered it in terms of, anchoring specific uh sensations or words around I've never I've just never thought of it I'm just trying to think I've never really thought of it in in that way I'm just wondering if people's listening and sitting there thinking that sounds terribly difficult because it's like oh I want to do this which sense should I think about I mean is it it, to think that way is that over complicating what you mean yeah it is a little bit. Yeah. I, I, it's not supposed to be complicated, right? We're just, we're, we're saying, okay, I like this smell, right? We might stand in the, the aisle of the store or we might, wherever we order our stuff from and just look at the scent options available 
and just pick the one that feels like it's most connected to how we're feeling and or how we want to feel and then just coordinate all of the other sense with that right it's not this is not about making it difficult this is not about overthinking it it's it's actually about making it as simple as possible right and you just got to start with somewhere you got to start somewhere right and so whatever feels good for you and feels right for you is what you're meant to do right and if that feels too complicated for you start somewhere else start with something else right start with thinking about what clothing you're putting on your body and does it fit you properly or or does it feel too tight or too loose you know and and honoring your experience inside of your own body with the clothing you're putting on it right or is there a piece of furniture in your house that you keep walking into every time you know you come in the door at night um how about we just move that piece of furniture because that's a physical barrier that's causing us harm and we have a right to not feel pain every time we walk into our house, right? It's simple (laughs) adjustments. It's about making simple adjustments and giving ourselves more room to be our authentic self and being more intentional about it. Okay. So does that include being more responsible for your actions and the consequences of those actions too? Absolutely. 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 That's where accountability comes in, right? Um, Because I think for many of us, um, at least I can speak for myself and experience with with the people I've worked with, we we can feel when we might have said something or done something that bothered somebody. And we might not be 100% sure of why. And oftentimes it's it's if the other person doesn't bring it up, we just let it go, but we can't actually let it go because it's bothered the other person. And then we might feel them distancing themselves from us. Um, You know, these little infractions start to build up on top of each other and then they become a much larger thing, right? Mm. That then kind of spills over and boils over. And then, and then maybe an argument happens or a disagreement happens, or there is disconnection at work um, with our boss or with, with someone we on our team or something like that. And, and we don't understand where it came from, but we do, we do, because we know that there's small little infractions. Maybe we said something, maybe something was done and we just didn't address it. We quote unquote, let it go, but it mattered to the person we hurt. And we were not respecting and honoring their lived experience by pretending we don't know that that something changed in the relationship. And, and if we go and we say, hey, something shifted, something changed, I, I think I might have hurt you or something I said must have might have bothered you. And I want to take ownership for that. And I want to understand it. If we do know what we did, we should just say, I'm sorry, I didn't take ownership for that information. I'm going to do better in the future. You know, whatever it is, we can, if we know, we should take ownership. If we don't know, we should ask. Um, And if we've established trust in that relationship, that person will feel safe to tell us. If we haven't, uh, that's a whole bigger issue. Um, But it's important to recognize and take accountability in the small moments and practice being uncomfortable, practice going to a person and saying, even though we're uncomfortable and saying, I take ownership of this thing and I'm going to do better. And then it builds deep, resounding trust, right? And then we can move forward together in really powerful ways, as opposed to each little infraction, adding further and further distance into a relationship until it dissolves entirely. Brilliant. Before we before we end, Shana, is there something I should have asked that I didn't? And in which case, you ask it and then tell me what the answer is. Um, I think what I would love to have gotten to would be to talk about the power of curiosity, oh, and yes. so okay. talk about that for just a you know in just a minute or, two, or a moment or so. Is that wrapped up in curiosity is the acknowledgement that we don't know is the acknowledgement that perfection isn't a thing, is the acknowledgement that there's always something new for us to learn that will help to expand our perception and our understanding of the world around us and help us to deeper connect to other people. Wrapped up in curiosity is vulnerability, is play, right? Um, is, Is our authenticity. And I truly believe that curiosity can 
ch- change the world and possibly save the world, right? For us to get deeper and deeper levels of curiosity um, that leads us to learning, that leads us to understanding, that leads us to empathy, that leads us to connection, that leads us to community, that leads us to be able to powerfully change the world for for everyone's benefit instead of just a few people's benefit. And so, you know, I just want to encourage people listening to dive into curiosity and really um, practice it, right? And if you want to know more about what that looks like and simple ways to do so, feel free to reach out. Brilliant. Thank you. Uh, Thank you for sharing that in particular, because, you know, we're all about pathological curiosity here. Yeah. Um, And I certainly agree with you. The more curious you are, the more open you are. Um, and the more likely that you will learn, um, be able to share more freely and more, I guess, intentionally. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Fantastic. That's brilliant. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me, Judith. I appreciated the conversation. Uh, it certainly has been an interesting one all about intentional leadership. Thank you out there for listening to the Maverick Paradox podcast. I am Jeeves Germain, your host, and I hope you've enjoyed listening to today's conversation with Shana as much as I enjoyed having it. As a leader, you know that having a strong level of influence is essential to achieving your goals. But how do you know if you're truly making an impact? Take the How influential are you? Scorecard to get a clear picture of your current level of influence and identify areas for improvement. With personalised recommendations and valuable strategies, you'll be able to amplify your influence and make a real difference as a leader. Don't miss this opportunity to improve your leadership skills. Take the scorecard now at amplifyyourinfluence.scoreapp.com. (laughs) 